10 things you should remove from your website right now. Now, before we go any further, if you have any of these on your website or a client's website you're currently building, let me know in the comment section down below. You can just use the numbers if you want to, it doesn't really matter. I wanna see how many of these sins that you are actually committing. I'm gonna be honest, I've committed many of these myself over the years as well. First off the bat, we have vague headlines. Now, we see these all over the place. Something that says words that mean nothing to anybody. Let me give you a couple of examples of good and bad. Let's start off with the Framer website. A great product, but if you land on this, the internet is your canvas. What does that even mean? <laughs> You've got a strap line underneath that makes a little bit of sense, but the whole internet is your canvas doesn't really mean a lot to anybody. However, if we took a look at this one, the fastest way to build notifications for your app, it says what it's going to do. If you land on this website, you can kind of get an idea of exactly what you're landing on, what it's gonna do, and then if you wanna dig deeper, you can dig deeper. Like I say, in stark contrast, the internet is your canvas, doesn't really mean much to anybody. So when you're creating those hero sections, those first things that people see on your website, make sure they say something about what it is the website's about, whether it's a product, a service, or anything else. Make people see exactly what you're offering them right away. Next up, let's talk about adding social proof to your website, specifically in the form of testimonials. Now, I'm sure we've all seen websites that have testimonials pages, dedicated pages specifically to testimonials, which probably 99.9% .9 of people never ever look at. It makes much more sense to have your testimonials in line in your content. So as people are reading through what you do, what you offer, they can kind of look to get social proof. The other thing, please, please, please don't use generic images, stock images. They just scream being unreliable and not true. A good example of this is Breakdance. As you can see, we have 18,000 plus creators using Breakdance to build incredible websites. And I'm sure that's true. I'm probably growing as well. But then we have five totally generic images of if you've ever been on the internet for more than five minutes, especially the lady in the red dress, you've probably seen these stock images used thousands and thousands of times. Better to have those replaced by brand logos, photographs of actual people to kind of enforce that whole truth behind it. Otherwise, it just looks like you're using filler text and information to kind of enforce a point and then nobody really believes what you're saying. Now we've seen the negative aspect of what they're doing, let's take a look at a positive aspect. If we scroll on down on the homepage, we now have social proof. We have an image of the person, information about where they're from, their feedback, and if we scroll on down, you can see we have even more social proof all available in the actual homepage itself. So it makes a lot more sense than just having that dedicated testimonials page, like I said, that pretty much nobody will ever visit. Just make sure that you don't use stock images to try and enforce the validity of your testimonials. Next up, let's talk about your navigation. One of the things we see very, very regularly is generic terms that mean nothing, or they just don't have enough information to kind of make people want to click on it. For example, technology, AI products, our story, careers, contacts. Much better to have things that are more information. For example, instead of AI products, you may have something like simple like our AI products or view our AI products. Instead of technology, you can talk about our groundbreaking technology. Just add something that gives more than just a generic terminology behind your navigation. Now obviously, you have to kind of balance this out with the amount of navigation elements you have and the space you have, but it makes more sense to just at least have something that's a little bit more in keeping than just generic terminology. So when you're looking at this, Kind of think how you can help the end user to be able to see exactly what any section of your website's like and make your navigation a very useful and usable place. Next up, let's talk about stock images. Now they are great and useful when you want to prototype something, but try not to use them on your live site if possible. Why? Because I think most people can probably tell a stock image a mile away, even if you're not a professional web designer. For example, let's take a look at this one. This is fine, it's a mock-up, it's a demonstration. But a live site, you've just got to look and you can see straight away, these are not the real people. This isn't the doctor you're probably going to speak to. This isn't the patient, and this isn't someone on a video call talking about their whatever their ailment is. So you can kind of look at it, and they all just look very polished, but totally fake. 
So I would rather see a normal photograph of a normal person than have these stock images used everywhere. If you can, if you're working with a client that has the budget for it, or you have a project with a budget for it, get a professional photographer in and get them to take the images that you need to be able to convey that professionalism in the overall design. Next up, let's talk about something that I think probably all of us have actually done and probably been guilty of, especially if we've created a website for ourselves, for our business, for our freelancing, for our agency, whatever. We actually put copy on there that's about us. Our homepage is stuffed with all the skills that we have, the years of experience, how many projects we've done, what we consider to be validation. The problem is the end user, the potential client, doesn't care a bit. What they want is someone to be able to solve a problem they've got. For example, they may want a website that converts, a website that sells, a website that generates leads. Well, they don't know if you can do that just by you talk about yourself. So when you're creating the copy or working with a copywriter, make sure you focus on the benefits to the visitor, the potential client, your ideal avatar. Forget about yourself. You can put that on your about section. You could dot that around where relevant to kind of add proof, but don't focus on it. Focus on the end user, your ideal client, your avatar, and tell them what you can do for them, how they will benefit from working with you and paying you exorbitant amounts of money. So bear that in mind when you're creating copy for your own websites and for clients. Let's talk about email links and why you should not have these on any site. The first and probably most important reason is the fact that any email harvesting bot can look through the code and find that email and start spamming you. That's a pain for you, but it's not really a good sign for your clients. If they start coming back to you saying, I'm getting tons of spam from this, you are kind of, well, you're kind of partially to blame there. Secondly, another really important thing is if you have an email link, that requires whoever wants to use that to have some form of email client installed on their phone, their tablet, or the device they're using. That's fine if it's their own device, but if it's a shared computer, it's an office computer, whatever, things like that, you don't have access to those features. And ultimately, I don't think you should have these links on your site. It's much better to replace any of these links with a link to the contact form or special form. For example, a quotation, an estimate, any of those kinds of things. Whatever you want to do, keep it as simple as just a name and a message, right the way to as comprehensive as you want as a multi-step form. But please don't include any email links on your website. It's a big, big no-no. Let's talk 404 pages. Nobody should have a 404 page on their site. In other words, you should always be checking your links to make sure you have no dead links on there, no missing pages and so on. But in the eventuality you miss something, you ultimately want to have a good professional 404 page to make sure that you can help the user get to what they want. This could be something as simple as going home, but it could be as complicated as having results on there to common posts, common pages, common questions, frequently asked questions, those types of things. However you want to create it, whatever format it needs to take to be applicable to your particular design. If you are creating any kind of website, always make sure one of your templates is that 404 and make it as useful and as fun if you want to and as colorful and entertaining as possible. But don't miss out on it, always include it. But two, make sure, go back and check that you don't have any missing pages to be able to even trigger that 404 page. Next up, let's talk social media. Now, whatever your thoughts about this are, pretty much every business has to have some kind of presence on at least one platform. But when it comes to your website, please do not put those links in your header, especially if you're going to use full color links. Why, you may be asking? Well, simple. You spent a lot of time and effort to get someone onto your website. The last thing you want to do is right at the top of your page, give them a reason to leave your website. If you want to use social media icons, which you should do, stick them in the footer, stick them somewhere out of the way. So if anyone's interested, they can go over and take a look at it. But putting them in your header section, in your navigation, at the top of your page, the very most important section of your entire overall website, the first thing that you see, don't give them a reason to leave. So move it somewhere else. The footer is probably the best option. And like I say, whatever you do, try to keep things as subtle as possible. Don't make them all full color dancing and singing and animated and all those kinds of awful things. Just bear that in mind. Next up, let's talk about the text. Sounds like a song that someone should sing, but we'll leave that as it is. When you're creating any kind of content that has a lot of text, keep things clean and simple two, three, and a push four lines per paragraph. Keep it nice and clean and simple. Plenty of white space. 
don't create big blocks of text because A, they're incredibly unwieldy to try to read, but also it's just not fun trying to pinpoint exactly what you want. You can't scan through that content. You literally have to invest the time in looking and finding what you want. Break things up into logical, simple, bite-sized pieces. People's attention spans are in. See, you've lost attention already. I had to do that to get you back on track. But anyway, also the other thing I want to say is make sure that your line length is not too long because there's nothing worse than trying to scan right the way across the screen. If whatever tool you're using to create your content allows you to use characters as a unit of measurement, keep things between around 40 to 50 characters long to give you a nice simple chunk of text, much like reading a novel or something. Keep it simple, nice, simple, clean, separated paragraphs, plenty of white space, short paragraphs, and not too long lines. Let's talk about video. Please do not have autoplay video. If it's a background to your hero section, and you need to use video there, okay, no problem, you can get away with it. But when you have embedded content, like you can see on screen right now, don't make that autoplay. It's annoying, and especially, especially do not have the audio on. There's nothing worse than you've got your speakers turned up, we've got a loud video, and you go to a website, click on a page, and bang, you are just blown away by this wall of sound, especially when you don't know where the heck it's coming from. You might have multiple browsers open and multiple tabs open. It's like suddenly this video starts playing, and you've got to scrabble around to try to find out which tab it is that's just really annoying you. In an office where there's lots of people around, you don't want to be that person. Anyway, there's 10 things, but most importantly, how many out of those 10 are you guilty of? Like I say, I've done several of these in my past, and I probably have some sites I need to go back and revisit to tweak and tidy these up. But let me know in the comments section which, any, all, no matter what, and any other sins that you think should be in this list. Drop a comment in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.